Hi, I'm Scott, and today I'm going to show you how I built these built-in cabinets on Dad It Yourself. Okay, so we're in my living room, and this is going to be my next DIY home project. Uh, these two piers we've had for about 12 years, and they have seen their day. They've made multiple moves, and we need some more storage other than those little teeny cabinets down there and there. So what I'm going to do is do two built-ins uh, right across here about 21 inches deep and across from the edge of the fireplace to the wall. Uh, the odd part is, is this side is 48 and a half, excuse me, this side is 48 and a half inches and this side is 49 and a half inches. So I'm going to build two cabinets that are 49, excuse me, 48 and a half inches and then have to scribe the wall on this side a little bit. Uh, and then countertops and then floating shelves all the way up to bracket the TV and then not this fish tank but a new fish tank will actually go on this side and then this whole area will get cleaned out and that will get retired. I built that probably six years ago, eight years ago. It's held up really well. So what's going to happen? Got to take out all the stuff out of these things. Got to cut back the floorboard or the baseboard. And then got to build two two by four frames. I'm leaving the carpet in because the next guy may want carpet there and may not want my built ins. So I'll build on top of the carpet here. Let's get started. Alright, so I'm going to start the installation process by removing the baseboards. What that means is this piece next to the fireplace, the back wall piece, and 17 inches, uh, 17 and a half inches of the piece along the side wall, and that'll make enough room for the base to slide right into this corner. I got to do that here and then on the other side of the fireplace. All right, so it's the next day. Uh, today's goal is to batch out some parts and pieces to put these cabinets together. But what I'm gonna start with is the base. I got the two by fours right here. I'm gonna cut those out, put those together and install those in the living room and then start working on breaking down the plywood for the cabinet boxes. Okay, next step, I'm going to build these pedestals, got all my pieces cut, uh, using number 9 T25 Torx head 3 inches. That should hold it together. Uh, not really structural, but uh, you know, a little extra strength can't hurt.
So I got both of these in. This one was a little bit extra challenging because God forbid I disconnect the internet in my house. So I have this four by eight sheet of uh, pine plywood from the big box store. Most people would have used Baltic birch, but this is gonna be painted so it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna be cutting it into 21 inch lengths and then cross cutting those to 26 and a quarter uh, using my Craig rip guide on this Ryobi cordless saw. So this second sheet of plywood, I ripped one 21 inch section out of it that'll be the base of the cabinets and two six inch strips that'll be used as the support stringers on the top and on the back. Next step is going to be cutting all these support stringers on the miter saw to their final length. So these are the center panels, and because the support spanners dissect them, I have to make some little cutouts in the back and in the front top so that those spanners can seat on those, and then I'll have a, a screw point for them as well. So I have this cutoff from the spanner, and we'll just use that as my marker there. Cut that one like that. I'm going to cut those out with the jigsaw. So I'm going to use pocket holes to put these together. This is the Craig R3 jig. And a lot of people say things about pocket holes, but pocket holes are perfect for what I'm doing here. This ain't fine furniture. So pocket holes, two in the ends of each of these stringers, and then some in the side panels, or excuse me, in the bottom panel to hold to the side panels. So, pocket hole montage coming up. Oh, I got them done with that. All right, all the pieces and parts are here. Everything's labeled, ready to go. Let's build some cabinets. Okay, got my bottom all set up. This is the left side. No, sorry. This is the right side out. This is the bottom. This is actually the back of the cabinet. Got it lined up, temporary clamp right here. I'm gonna put some Type Bond 3 down this seam and drive those screws in. I'm going to drill two countersink holes in this center to hold the center divider panel in, and then that panel will in turn support this bracket for me to put it on from behind.
I uh, got my studs marked out on the back and we're going to go ahead and countersink some holes and screw this thing into the studs and down into the pedestal with my 3 inch E25 Torx heads. All right, here we go. All right, second cabinet's in. Internet got disconnected. And look at that. Mom at yourself already decided she wanted to paint it. Couldn't even wait till tomorrow. So what I need to do, I need to fix that floorboard right there. And then I'm going to put some Alex Fast Dry paint caulk right there and right along that edge there so she can keep painting away to her heart's content. Face frames tomorrow. All right, so that's the end of part one. This video is getting a little bit longer than I anticipated. So stick around for part two where we'll talk about paint, the tops, drawer fronts, and door faces. If you have any questions or suggestions, put those down below in the comments. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in, and the subscribe button's right over here. Thanks for watching. Dad it yourself.